morning, everyone. Morning. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. I know, we've got kind of a small group here today. You know, y'all can move up. I, you were going to say that, right, Pat? Yeah. <laughs> Why do you move up? Move up. Yeah. 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 I know. <laughs> It's so nice to hear you, see you all here today. This is the seventh Sunday of Easter, and it's also Ascension Day, and Pat's gonna tell you a little bit about um, how we're putting both of those together today. Um, so it's, it's Mother's Day, it's uh, the last Sunday in Easter, it's Ascension Day, it's, it's a big day in the church. I wish there were a few more people with us today, but maybe we'll have some more folks join us online, and that would be great too. So welcome, and um, let us begin our worship. Um, actually, Pat, would you like to sure. say a few words? Sure. We are um, going on two tracks today, unlike every other Sunday. One track is the lessons for the day, which is the seventh Sunday after Easter. And those you'll hear um, Deacon Terry preach upon. But we also want to not overlook the great church celebration, which would have been on Wednesday, which is Ascension Day, the day that our Lord arose to be with the Father to guarantee that we also will rise with him and be with God. And that, that's really the Christian message. It's not salvation, it's eternal life. And that's the he is risen indeed, and we are risen with him message. So all of the hymns today are ascension hymns. The lessons are the last Easter lessons. So if you sing it, think ascension. If you say it, think the lessons. Okay. Let's rise and join in singing hymn number 216 in the blue book. And this, this is one of those ones that switches back and forth a little bit. So here are the instructions. We sing the refrain, hail the festival day. Then we sing verse one to one tune, then skip down to verse two. The odds are on top, the evens are on the bottom. Then we'll go back to the top, sing verse three, go down, sing verse four. Up to the top, sing verse five, go down, sing verse six, and then we repeat the wonderful refrain one more time. So refrain, one, two, three, four, five, six, refrain. Okay, Stephanie. Christ ascends, 
is risen. The Lord, the Lord is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. There is one body and one spirit. There is, there is one, one hope in God's, God's call to us. One God of all. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest heaven, glory to God, glory to God, praise to God's people, God's people on earth. God be with you. And also, and also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for the reading. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers, together the crowd numbered about 120 persons, and said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed to Joseph, called Barabbas, who was also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show which one of us of these two you have chosen to take the place in, his, in this ministry, an apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the 11 apostles. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> we'll read Psalm 1 in unison. Happy are they who have not walked in the house of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is, it is not, not so with, with the, the wicked. wicked. They, they are, are like chaff which, which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. A reading from the first letter of John. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he has testified to his son. Those who believe in the son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life and the life is in his son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thank Thanks be to God. God.
Our next hymn is number 217, an ascension hymn which Jesus is referring to going back to the Father in the gospel. So please rise. Oh, 214, I'm sorry. But rise anyway. <laughs> The Holy Gospel of our Savior, Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Lord Christ. Jesus prayed for his disciples, saying, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them. And they have received them and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, because, but on behalf of those whom you gave me because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now, I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you. And I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. 
I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself so that they may also be sanctified in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. of my lips and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Christ, our strength, our Redeemer. Please be seated. Since it is the last or seventh Sunday of Easter, Alleluia, Christ is risen! <laughs> right answer! <you> know? <laughs> Alleluia indeed, yes, here we are together celebrating, worshiping on this last Sunday of the Easter season, the seventh Sunday. And such a beautiful day that we have, and it's, and it's even Mother's Day to boot. And so a special acknowledgement to all of you who mother, or who have mothered, or perhaps you may be remembering our mothers. And thank God for them. Now, I'm going to pick your brains a little bit. Take you back to the first Sunday, first Sunday after Easter, if you can remember back that far. The scriptures directed our attention, if you remember, to the apostles, particularly on Thomas, and so therefore we uh, kind of, over the years, acknowledged as, or called that as Doubting Thomas Sunday. But our focus has been on those disciples and just a couple of weeks ago, we also had a, a, a point in our scripture of uh, like Psalm 23 and, uh, and references, to, and we have to the good shepherd of Jesus, being Jesus, and we have kind of dubbed that day as Good Shepherd Sunday. So today, does anybody know what today has been designated as? What special day in the church? Ascension Day was last Thursday. Yeah, yeah so you're kind of right. Because I don't know either, we haven't. There's no specific person or event or whatever that we're celebrating here today. Besides, it's the end of the Easter season. Yeah. And that is something to be joyful about in and of itself, right? We don't need a special designation to worship and proclaim that Jesus Christ has risen and brings us along with. Amen to that. And so, I mean, somebody may have some kind of designation but I, that I'm totally unaware of, but as far as I know, today is the seventh or last Sunday of the Easter season. And so I find it interesting that for today's readings, though, they kind of draw my attention, and maybe they drew your attention as well, to another one of Jesus' disciples who played a critical role in Jesus's life. And I'm talking about Judas. You know Judas. And I think that we all can agree that history has not been very kind towards Judas Iscariot. You know, the ultimate betrayer, traitor. I mean, when just the mention of his name, if we, if we say his name, you know, the, the clouds begin to darken and the winds begin to howl. 
you know, it's, uh, we're, it's so ominous. The organ starts to make discordant sounds to us, and we get this kind of bad taste in our mouths even, just saying Judas Iscariot. You know, it's how dare we, right? After all, he was the one who identified Jesus to the Jewish authorities and soldiers to turn Jesus over to them. After that, Jesus committed suicide. And that in and of itself has been denigrated as the ultimate sin, if you will. But I ask, is our subsequent judgment of Judas throughout the ages, has that been fair? Now, in the first lesson for today that Brian read for us, the Acts of the Apostles, it was probably written before and by the writer of the Gospel of Luke. So it's probably done none, and then writing the Gospel of Luke was more of a prequel, if you want, to the Acts of the Apostles. That's probably how that came about and to us. And this lesson today begins after, and it's the very beginning of, Act, of the Acts of the Apostles, the book, it begins after Jesus has ascended. So it tells a brief story of Jesus' ascension. And then here are the disciples left again without Jesus. Now, if you remember back to that Doubting Thomas Sunday in those lessons, where were the apostles? They were hiding. They were locked away for fear, confusion. They didn't know what was going on because Jesus had just been murdered and his body stolen. He's gone. And what do they do? Oh, my word, I don't know what we'll do. Fast forward 40 plus days. Jesus is now gone and ascended to heaven. And how do the disciples respond? So very differently. Now they are confident, they are assured, and they recognize that they have a mission. You know, this is that group that spent all that time living, breathing, eating, serving with Jesus. It's finally kicking in for them what God is calling them to do. And if you noticed in that reading, there was really no mention or kind of brief mention about Judas. Now, I'll admit, if you look carefully, that reading we have from Acts is one section and then another section, and that middle section that it skips over in our reading actually talks about the death of Judas. And it's quite frankly, it's a little bit gory. But by and large, when you look at how Peter and the disciples are responding to Judas now being gone as well, it's almost as they're not passing it by, but they're acknowledging it and they're moving on. I'm not so sure I would have been so generous if I were one of them. I would probably have been more of, you know, boom, boom, boom. I mean, it was just, you know, I would have vilified the villain, right? But not them. And I think that's important for us to take into consideration before we, I, might consider Judas that ultimate, ultimate sinner. Then we go to this reading from the Gospel of John. And here we have, in this section, this is Jesus' final prayer. So this actually takes place before he ascends to heaven. But it's his final prayer, and the disciples are there to witness this. And Jesus is interceding for the, the disciples. And of course, my friends, when I'm referring to the disciples, I'm referring to us as well. Just as the disciples had a mission from God, so do we. Just as Jesus was interceding for the disciples, Jesus does as well for us. And so Ju Jesus actually does refer to Judas in this prayer, but not necessarily by name. But he's praying to God to protect the disciples. I'll quote from that. And not one of them, meaning the disciples, not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost so that the scripture might be fulfilled. And that's all that Jesus says about it. Not that Judas was this ultimately bad person or that is condemned to hell forever or that whatever. It's just that was Judas. 
And that's what we get to learn from Jesus because that's what the disciples are learning from him as well. Judas fulfills his destiny and is lost. But through the centuries, we have come under the, the conclusion, if you will, and we make the error, perhaps, of how we look at this whole idea of destiny. And we define this event more of a predestiny, if you will. You know, we, we make the assumption that Judas was predestined to betray Jesus, and he had no choice in the matter. But that's not what the church teaches. And that's not what we believe. But that is the common assumption, is it not? That, that Jesus, Judas had to do that. No. Judas made a choice. And that choice became his destiny. You know, it kind of reminds me of Darth Vader, right? Trying to convince Luke to, to come and join the dark side. No. <laughs> Luke. Come to the dark side. You know, that kind of thing, right? This is your destiny. We've seen those movies, right? And that has a bit of that predestiny concept to it. But what does Luke Skywalker do? He chooses to not go to the dark side. And his destiny becomes actually saving his own father, Darth Vader. So sorry if that's a, a, a spoiler alert for y'all. <laughs> But he saves his father from the dark side. Luke's destiny actually is of his own choosing. Just as Judas made his choice. The result was his destiny. Just as you and I, we make our choices. The results are our destinies. The results are our destinies in the making. Every day, you and I, we make choices. Some choices are really large, big choices for our lives and maybe the lives around us. And a lot of them are just small indecision, become decision kind of choices, right? And of course there are choices everywhere and anywhere in between those. We make choices that are good for us and that hopefully are good for those around us. And some we make, well, maybe subsequently we might be uh, a little bit sorry that we did. But that's the thing, folks. That's the thing. It is you and me. It is any and every person who makes any kind of decision at any time. We call this free will because we can make these choices and we do. You know, God is not some overarching puppet master. I think about marionettes in this matter, about pulling strings to make the marionettes or us move. God is not moving his hand inside us a, a puppet and giving voice to what we should be saying. No, God is not doing that to us or for us. We, you, me, all of us, everybody, we are created by God and given this ability to make those choices and that is just one indication of how much God loves us how much God truly loves us sometimes though in our decisions in our actions in our sayings we might look at some of these scriptures like what we have for today, and we might take them a little bit literal and think that, you know, it's either all one way or the other. And when we do that, we can sometimes miss out on all the fullness of God's love and presence that we can find in between. And that's the God's love and fullness that is given to you and me. For instance, when we look at the psalm for the day, and no, the Psalm 1 is one of my favorite psalms. And may, we, we may look at this as wholly black or white, no in-between whatsoever, because it starts off the first half of it, is that you're either happy and blessed, you know, you're delighted because, hey, you're in God's love and you love God, and, and so you're up here. And then it ends with kind of down here, but if you don't have that love for God, God is not in you, and you are not, you're living a miserable life. You are doomed forever. You are a sinner, and there's no hope. 
you know, similarly in this first letter from John, you either have God in your life, good, or you don't, bad. And there are no shades of gray, of gray anywhere in there. But that's too literal of a way to do that because there are all kinds of shades of gray and colors of the spectrum. And we live in those shades of gray and colors of the spectrum because we are human beings. We're not just one, we're not just the other. Sometimes we are one and sometimes we are the other, but more often than not, we're somewhere in between. We're all shades of that spectrum, and so is God. Because God comes and meets us wherever we happen to be. Thanks be to God. God meets us anywhere and wherever we might be. Because, let's face it, we're not either saints all the time. We're not sinners all the time. We are both and all the time. And just like Judas, we have our times when we betray Jesus, when we ignore Jesus, when we go our own way. We forget Jesus. And while we don't know Judas's motivations for his actions, we don't know the motivations of folks around us either, to be frank. What we do know are our own motivations for the things that we do or not do. We know the motivations for the things that we say or that we do not say. Of course, that's when we take the time to really consider what we do or not do, say or not say. It takes some effort sometimes. But when you think about it, that's why we aren't called to judge others. Because we don't know what might be in their hearts. Instead, we're called to forgive them. And we're called to forgive ourselves. And that's the motivations that we know. Just like when the person raced by on the freeway, cuts me off. It's my choice to get upset, maybe utter a few choice words or gestures, but it's also my choice to forgive them. It's my choice to pray for them and to pray for others around them who are endangered by their actions. Pray for their safety. That's just one tiny example. You know, in this prayer from the gospel that Jesus is giving to God, Jesus is praying to God to protect us, the disciples, you, me, all of us, to protect us. And that protection includes loving us and forgiving us. None of us, no single person ever, ever, ever has ever been beyond God's forgiveness. Not Judas. Not someone who's committed some kind of horrible or abominable crime. And certainly not someone who might have hurt us or done us wrong. We, you and I, we are called like the disciples to forgive because we have God in our hearts. We forgive because we follow the way of Jesus Christ. When we choose to love and to forgive, the result the destiny of, is where I'm going with that. But the result is that we are like those in the first half of that first psalm. When we choose to not love and to not forgive, the result is that we're like those in the latter half of that psalm. And as John wrote in that first letter, when we have Jesus in our hearts, we have life. This is life as God intended for us to live. It's a full, rich, deep, incredible life. And when we choose to not have Jesus in our hearts, our lives are not nearly so full or rich or meaningful. It is a lesser shadow life than what it can and what God intends for us to have. That is the choice that God allows us, gives us, enables us, creates us to make. Each day, 
every day, all the time. We can choose to love. And when we decide to do that, when we decide to love, when we decide to forgive, the resulting destiny is that which we pray so frequently, that God's will is done, and that earth, the resulting of that prayer is that God's earth become much more like heaven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Stand as you are able and let us affirm our faith in the ancient words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, Father the Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for our and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. of the people on this day that the Lord has made let us rejoice and be glad as we pray to the God who raised Jesus from the dead saying alleluia hear, hear our prayer. prayer for the church especially for Michael our presiding bishop Matthew our assisting bishop Esther our priest Terry our deacon and Loretta our pastoral assistant that we all may be signs of Christ's light for all who have lived in darkness, of hope for all who know pain and suffering, and of love for all who have been rejected. Alleluia. Alleluia. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. For this St. Aidan's Parish family, that we may be strong in faith, confident in hope, and abounding with love for God and neighbor, and witness to the risen Christ in our words and deeds. Alleluia, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all the human family, and especially the people of Ukraine, Israel, and Gaza, that God will keep them safe and bring them to a springtime of hope and peace. Alleluia, Alleluia. hear, hear our, our prayer. For the leaders of the nations, and all those in positions of public trust and leadership, that God will strengthen them with wisdom, patience, and a desire to open new channels for peace 
and reconciliation. Hallelujah. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all those who cannot be with family and loved ones, that as they hear the good news of the resurrection, they may be bound together in love. Alleluia. Alleluia. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all those who have died, that they may live forever with Christ in the glory of the resurrection. Alleluia. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lifting our voices with all creation and all the saints who have borne witness to the risen Christ, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. Alleluia. To you, O risen Lord, we, we give praise and glory. Let us take this opportunity together to offer our thanks to God for the many blessings we find in our lives. And I ask you to take a moment to actually name those blessings, particularly for those who mother. I ask your prayers for the work and mission of the Anglican Communion Worldwide, of which we are part. Today, in our Anglican cycle of prayer, we lift up the people of the Anglican Church of Burundi. We pray for Justin, Bishop of Canterbury. In our diocesan prayer, we lift up the people of St. Paul's Parish in Watertown. We pray for the mission of and work of the Episco Wisco Camp the Camping Ministry of the Diocese of Eau Claire, Fond du Lac, and Milwaukee. Here in our own faith community, we pray for the mission and ministry of formation for our young people and for those who teach, as well as for our adults. We pray for the ministry of our altar guild. We give thanks for those who will be training this week as part of the emergency response team for this parish, as well as for those who are working for the plant sale to happen this coming week. I ask your prayers for healing, health, and peace for all those in, in need in their lives, particularly for Peter, Lindsay, Megan, Melinda, Sarah, Lynn, for Mickey, Tim, Charlie, Liam, Lena and her family, Fred and Pat, Steve, Chris, Barbara, Dan, Mary Ann, Pete, Jan and Mike, Bert, Elliot, Dave, for Lois, Bob, Don, Sandy, Harold, Nancy. Are there others? We also pray for those who are, may be in mourning or are missing loved ones, particularly for the Talikowski family, for the Neen family and friends, for John and Laura, and for Dave. I ask your prayers for those who travel, who are away from us at this time. We pray for safe journeys and reunion, for safe journeys and reunions with them as they return. We also give thanks for those who serve the greater community, particularly those in our military, lifting up Sean, Ethan, and Juliana, as well as for all who may be first responders or healthcare providers. And finally, I ask your prayers for those who have gone before us, who have been windows of Christ's love and their lives to us, particularly those of our mothers who have gone before, that they may rest in peace in the nearer presence of Christ. I lift up Jean. Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all to, who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Let us greet one another.
Thanks, sweetie. We're kind of small in number today, but we got a lot of spirit, so that goes a long way, and I think that's wonderful. It's a beautiful, beautiful day. I would like to start announcements by first thanking Pastoral Loretta Mendoza for uh, supply uh, last Sunday. Um, I am very sure that you appreciated her homily and her presence, uh, her officiating. Um, she is really a, a wonderful uh, colleague, and I'm so, so grateful for her. So um, thank you, Loretta, for last week. And it was nice to take a little break. We drove to Hazelhurst for a hamburger. So that was fun. <laughs> it was. We had a great time. Yeah. <laughs> that was our little vacation with the dogs. <laughs> I also want to thank Terry. Thank you, Deacon Terry, for preaching today. Sure. He's very, very kind of you. Thank you. Um, I I want to thank the team of leaders that met yesterday at Lynn Melendez's house. Um, Lynn is a member of our church vestry, and she lives in, uh, it is the most beautiful place on earth, um, uh, on top of a, a hill out in the woods. Uh, she has a beautiful home. She has chickens. She has a garden. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, and she invited uh, several of us, uh, the vestry and a few other folks, to meet uh, to do some planning. Um, we met yesterday, and we, we really, I think, had a good conversation. Um, it was Lynn Melinda and Charles Gardner and Laura Johnston and Eric Wetzel, Donna Dinko, Jerry Kelly, Pat Gardner, Bruce Pollock, Deacon Terry Gardner, and Pastora um, Loretta Mendoza and me. And um, we talked about some very serious things. We talked about the mission of the church. We talked about the mission of the church and how we can um, walk together as a congregation um, in ways that might be new and creative to carry out the mission of the church. So it was a deep and challenging conversation, but I think, um, I think we all felt that it was worthwhile. So um, we could feel you praying for us, so thank you for that. Um, we've got a couple of things. We've got a birthday to celebrate. Laura Johnston is having a birthday uh, on May 17th. Let us pray for you. Uh, oh, it's nice to have a birthday. And you didn't even have to tell us the number. It's okay. 25, right, yes. <laughs> right, let us pray. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants. Laura, as she begins another year, grant that she may may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of her life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. We don't have any anniversaries, but I thought we could pray for folks celebrating anniversaries anyway, because I know there are some out there. Let us pray. Oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. 
Send therefore your blessing upon these servants that may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness, patience, in wisdom, and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congratulations to those of you celebrating anniversaries. All right. We have a coffee hour today, so please, please come. And Judy would like I to make an announcement. Thank the people that helped us both clean up. We were Gracie, Sherry Ann, and Dan, Ron, Ted, and Sandy. Thank you all very much. It worked out very well. We had a lot more days than we thought. Oh, it's hard to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you all both. And thank you for organizing. Thank you for organizing that, Judy. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, very good. Ne yeah, Greta, please. So today is the collection day for the nine boxes, the blue boxes. So the blue boxes. Yeah, start mm -hmm. off and put that on. And we are called to be thankful for our blessings mm -hmm. and not to offer big gifts, but small gifts on this occasion. Right. Um, something very simple, including today. It's a wonderful blessing. Absolutely, yep. Yep, that's just fine. Right. Thank you, Greta, for organizing that. Absolutely. And thank you, Greta, for organizing that. Um, just one thing, the UTO boxes are what Greta's talking about. Please do give generously. Uh, United Thank Offering is, is a wonderful um, um, organized uh, activity by the Episcopal Church, and uh, Greta's absolutely right. The theme is inclusion this year, and it really is a, a very worthwhile cause. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Ron. Okay, next Wednesday is Police Officers Memorial Day. Good reminder. Good reminder. Um, come on, uh, let me. Uh, excuse me. Uh, next Sunday is Pentecost. Uh, Pentecost is uh, one of the big days in the church. Please wear red. It's a good way to wear red. Good day to, to celebrate uh, with uh, the color red. Um, and it also is an important day in the church to uh, remember. Um, the unity of the church. If any of you speak a different language, uh, a language in addition to English, please contact Deacon Terry. Um, he's organizing readers to speak uh, part of the first reading in another language. Um, so, so please, please contact him if you speak another language, and uh, it would be great to participate in that. We will provide the readings. You don't have to translate. Right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, Donna, yes. Yeah,
Thank you, Donna. And thank you for organizing that. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Laura. And thank you for organizing that, Laura. Thank you very much. All right, did we get everybody? Bruce is next year. Okay. A while back, the uh, creation care people met, um, and one of the things that came out of that was bird housing. We got them. In fact, we got chicks, and we got eggs, and we got nests. So there's four bird houses out here. Huh? <laughs> uh, and, <laughs> anyway, that's all. What kind of birds? Thanks. I work on the houses, uh, and the, the, you can't. I mean, somebody once said, if you build a flamingo house, you're probably not going to get flamingos. <laughs> Where the birds make their home. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. That's doing it. Thank you. Let us offer a prayer for Mother's Day. Um, this is a prayer from Trinity Episcopal Church in um, Martinsburg, West Virginia. Uh, I thought it was particularly uh, meaningful, and I'd like to share it with you today. Let us pray. On this Mother's Day, we give thanks to God for the divine gift of motherhood in all its diverse forms. Let us pray for all the mothers among us today, for our own mothers, those living and those who have passed away, for the mothers who loved us and for those who fell short of lo loving us fully, for all who hope to be mothers someday, and for those whose hope to have children has been frustrated. For all mothers who have lost children, for all women and men who have mothered others in any way, those who have been our substitute mothers and who we have done so for those in need, and for the earth that bore us and provides us with our sustenance. We pray this all in the name of God, our great and loving mother. Amen. Amen. Let us uh, worship God in the beauty of holiness. Please rise for our offertory hymn. It's number 603, all about what Deacon Terry was preaching, the love of God. was lifted from the earth his arms stretched out above through every culture 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God of all power, you ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory, glory to you forever and ever. ever. At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile Earth, our island home. By your will they were created and have their being. From the primal elements you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have, have mercy, Lord, Lord for, for we are sinners in your sight. sight. Again and again, you called us to return through prophets and sages. You revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By, By his blood, he reconciled us. By, By his, his wounds, we are healed. healed. And therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Oh. 
so we who have been redeemed and made a new people by water and the spirit bring before you these gifts sanctify them by your holy spirit to be the body and the blood of jesus christ our lord on the night he was betrayed he took bread said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his friends and said take eat this is my body which is given for you do this for the remembrance of me after supper he took the cup of wine gave thanks and said drink this all of you this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins whenever you drink it do this for the remembrance of me remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving we, we celebrate, celebrate his death, death and, and resurrection, resurrection as, as we, we await the day, the day of his coming. God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebecca, Jacob and Leah and Rachel, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world around us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, Lord be known, known to, us to us in the, in the breaking, breaking of the bread. bread. Accept these prayers and praises, God, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, bread and, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. God for the people of God. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Mm -hmm. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the, the bread blood of Christ, heaven. the cup of salvation. The blood of Christ. 
cup of salvation. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Do you prefer the chalice or the cup? The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The body of Christ, the blood of heaven. The body of Christ, the blood of heaven. The body of Christ, the blood of heaven. The body of Christ. Let us pray. Almighty and living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And, and now, O oh God, send, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
us, O Lord God Almighty, this church home, that in it there may be health, purity, the strength of humility, goodness, mercy, and the fulfillment of your law, and thanksgiving. Bless all people everywhere, and may the blessing of God, creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit remain with all of you on this day and forever. Amen. Amen. Please join in our final hymn, Christ is Risen. Shout Hosanna. This is in the insert, the gold insert, and the tune is Beethoven's Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. So sing with joy. Peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. alleluia.